You are listening to High School Fabulous, where real talk is our vernacular. This video is also sponsored to you by Do Wipes, where your ass is funky on the road. <laughs> Do Wipes. Come on. Oh, man. You got also, a leaky butt Old Spice. <laughs> yeah, where you got hemorrhoid butthole <laughs> driving up and down the road. <laughs> Do wipes. Do wipes Ooh. for those post do seepages after you've been eating on the road. Oh man, you use those pre and post dudes. <laughs> do wipes. Shout out to your do funky wipes. Ass, Sponsorship. Because your funky ass couldn't find a parking spot in the truck stop to take a shower. Do wipes. <laughs> First of all, um, I think we need to put a disclaimer. You're supposed to take a shower and then put the deodorant on. Now when you do <laughs> You don't do cover wipes. it up. <laughs> do wipes. Now are those now are dude wipes stronger than the feminine wipes though? Well, we're, that's what I'm gonna see when I ain't take a shower for two days. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What scent is it? What flavor? Do it have a scent flavor on it? Let's see. Mint chill is what it is. So oh, it's mint chill. Oh, you gotta smell like a mojito, bro. You gotta smell like <laughs> yeah. a tropical negro. <laughs> Ninja Bray got a title and married Miss Universe, bro. Okay, he's the most overachieving little dude to make it. He got a lot out of basketball, man. He got, he got a lot, lot of. He's tiny. The quote Charles, the quote Charles Barkley. When yeah, I don't know if you ever seen Kenny Smith White. She's gorgeous. Kenny Smith White is gorgeous, and she's in a commercial in Atlanta for some yoga place, and they keep showing her, and they show her from like behind in this commercial doing mm-hmm. yoga, and they showed it one day. They kept showing it on TNT. And he goes, "Man, we guys stop being pervs and showing a picture of my wife." And Charles go, "Man." Man, Kenny basketball was good to you, man. Because if if you wasn't if you didn't play in an NBA, you wouldn't be marrying anything like that. <laughs> basketball be good to you. Mike Chesky retired, guys. What yeah, Brandon, guys did you go to game? It was down the street from you, dude. Mike Chesky's last game. Dude, Mike, Brandon, you dude, live in Tobacco Road? Well, oh, I'm going to need y'all to sponsor this next. <laughs> this next yeah, he lives in Tobacco Road. This Duke, this Duke home game. Dude, tickets were going for like $2,000, man. Brandon, you need to eat. That's when you put on. That's when you put on the yellow security staff event jacket, <laughs> windbreaker jacket, yeah. and walk up. No one's gonna question you because you look Brandon. like you're security. Slack. You just go stand right on the court. <laughs> Turn Brandon. your back to the court when the ball's in play after game. Yeah, Brandon. Brandon, you just saved two thousand dollars worth of fuel. South Carolina. I mean, you're in Carolina now. You you got you got that. How much is gas out there right now, Brandon? In North Carolina, it's three sixty nine. Oh, That's wow. expensive. And people man. are complaining about that, right? Dude, I feel like everybody's posting pictures of the gas prices in California right now. <laughs> Dude, yeah, but like this, Brandon, I, I went and filled up my Honda a week ago, and it cost me seventy five bucks. Mm-hmm. Over I, um, bucks. I've been um, and Jared keeps planning these long ass road trips for some stupid ass reason. Now's not the time, Jared. That camping trip might be postponed. <laughs> it's at the end of the month, end of the month. So we got time. We got a couple weeks. Man, we about to go to New York at the end of the month. I don't want to waste money before going to New York. I'm putting all my focus and I can't get my sister basic yeah. my dog. I'm getting her right, to New York. They want to go to Knoxbury Farm for our no, summer vacation. Price. <laughs> no, summertime, maybe they plan. Man, I, I I saw gas was five fifty. I was when I was driving up mo- Monday, Aaron. We we, we, uh-huh. we were in uh along the coast, the Morro Bay. We stopped at the gas station there, and uh, yeah, it was five fifty a gallon. Shit, five fifty, Brandon. Well, <laughs> well, the crazy thing is, like, we know they have reserves, so like they're not <laughs> tapping into their reserves yet. Oh yeah, like they said weeks. they're releasing 60, 60 million barrels to alleviate gas prices. I'm like, okay. <laughs> They got more. The, uh, oh, they got this no is the United States pump more barrels than the rest of the world a, a day. It makes and, no sense. Oh, we were driving just, up through California, Central something. California, and there was some. We saw uh, some oil. All pumps. you see is oil rigs. That's all you see. Yeah. That's without Dude. fracking. With Dude, fracking, we, we got more than ever. That's what I'm saying. The Midwest, all that fracking in in Texas and the Midwest and anywhere along that pipeline where they told those uh, Native Americans, "Get your ass out of here." Be putting this oil in your water. And Shailene Whitley. They also told Shailene Whitley, get your ass out of here. Because she was out there camping. Glamping. Yeah, they, did, they did it right after Kyrie's Irving brunch. Oh, yeah, that mother. He wasn't out there. 
Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You are listening to the High Score Five One Zero podcast. You can catch us at High Score Five One Zero on the Instagram, YouTube, and at Horcrux Hipster on the Twitter. Uh, also, check out the .com and check us out on our Patreon at patreon.com backslash High Score Five One Zero. Playoffs? Don't talk about it. playoffs. You kidding me? Playoffs? You sign up with us. Uh, you can talk about playoffs with us. Anyways, and we are here with. Uh, this is AG3 coming at you faster than some of these DBs supposed to be running at their combine this weekend. Mm. The shit just strong for no reason. And these niggas that sell the weed be happy than a motherfucker to tell you how much stronger this shit is than the last shit. Just as soon as they see you, just nigga, nigga, nigga. This shit right here, nigga. This shit right here, nigga. And we are here with... Hello, everyone. This is Captain P-Funk coming at you faster than... Um... Some of these defensive tackles just running in combine this uh, this workout season or whatever the hell is you call this. What is this combine? Whatever the hell you call it. <laughs> the combine, man. <laughs> this shit here, niggas. This shit's called death, nigga. You be like, nigga, that don't even sound attractive. What? The- you mean I'm gonna hit it and die? And we are here with. This is Brandon, a.k.a. Taco Pablo. Um, you know, having a hard time keeping it together. Like the announcer trying to uh, pronounce all these crazy-ass names this kid's got in the combine. Hello, Steven, my boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, my ass. Who this nigga up on that name? Brandon might be right, man. There's a dude named Sauce Gardner. I couldn't figure out. They, they never said his real name. Oh, that's the Cincinnati corner who didn't let up a touchdown in college or whatever. Yeah. And my name is Jared, a.k.a. DJ Art, with two T's for a double dose of that tink-tink, the dear silence, or is just Jared? What would Michael B. Jordan do? Michael B. Michael B. Kobe? Michael B. Jordan and Will Smith are pairing up. This is how you start the show, Jared. To do a sequel <laughs> of I Am Legend. AG3, what would Michael B. Jordan do? Man, somehow, Will Smith, I'm going to play your son who somehow died in that movie, but he's going to come back because of vibranium, right? Now you're going to be able to bring him back, and then it's going to be me and you walking around. And then I'm going to do an accent just like you had in After Earth. And I'm going to be, man, we're going to make this. We gonna, Man, this is going to be the greatest movie ever. Well, this is going to be the one of the greatest sci-fi ever around. It's going to be like a mix between Walking Dead and Lord of the Rings, man. They're going to be talking about this forever. When it's all said and done, we're going to show up at the Oscars and I'm just going to be like, man, I'm here to take every Oscar off your hands because we did it. <laughs> you know, the only way this makes sense is if Michael B. Jordan's character is too stupid to realize there's been an apocalypse for the last few years. <laughs> oh, you're right. <laughs> he runs out of Hot Pockets and he's like, what the fuck's happening? <laughs> Will Smith feels man. The movie wasn't good enough to make a part two, man. Well, apparently they're bringing back the writer of the first movie. So I think that's a um, a good thing for continuity's sake, and you know, hoping that if, uh, well, if the this first movie was a fuck, the, the first movie also was terrible. But I agree, I agree with you. <laughs> it wasn't. It was great. so boring, and it was a great book and a horrible movie. I actually liked I the movie. Really I watched. Uh, I watched it recently, like a year and a half ago or so, a year ago, and just watching it and like seeing it for what it was. It was like a psychological th- a thriller to me. And it was like, a, it was just, there was very little dialogue, very little words. And so it was like, you're putting, if you, you know, put yourself in the, the mind's eye of our main character, it's kind of like, it's kind of a cool, crazy simulation of existence in this situ- type of situation. So I appreciate it in that way. Um, I was able to put myself in the story, but I don't know if they can be able I to do that. I watched it multiple times. I didn't get nothing out of it in each watch. I, wa- I owned it on DVD. I watched it like four or five times. I don't think it's that good. We get you some edibles. To put, uh, the book was it. good. And they streamed away from the book and made a shitty movie. Well, the, the writer here is the same writer. So the things so that obviously I obviously someone who fucked up the book. <laughs> so somebody who either fucked up the book based on your perspective, fucked up the book or uh, did a good job writing a certain story to be presented a certain way. I, I didn't see, I didn't read the book. So um, I can see why the book would be, you know, a lot of people have a thing where they enjoy the book better than the movies for most times. Are there any movies that you can think of off the top of your head that, that were books that the movie was better than the book though? 
Because I think it has to be a really good book to be made into a movie anyway. There's a new right? movie out called Drive My Car on HBO uh, Max. And that's off of a short story by my favorite writer, uh, Haruki Murakami. Mm-hmm. And so uh, it was a short story, but it looked like it could be real good, man. It's up for an it's up for Best Picture Oscar and Best, like, what it's a couple. It's up for like seven. It looked real good. So I'm going I'm to vote for it even though I ain't seen it yet. Drive My Car. It was a big hit. Great story, and but I, the movie looked good. Uh, any other movies that were better than books? Um, Black Hawk Down. The movie was more entertaining than that damn book. <laughs> I read that book. My mom bought me that book. When what I about was Captain school. Phillips? Was that a based off a book? <laughs> it was based off a book. It might have been. I'm the Captain Down. <laughs> I'm gonna vote for that too. I don't know if it's based off a book, but it got my vote. Uh, let's see what else was a book. Silence of the Lambs. That was a book. I didn't read it though, but. Uh, Devil's Rare Prada. I'm just going through best books off of movies. Oh, it was another book I read. I'm trying to figure. I can't remember what it was. It was the Raisin in the Sun. Of, one, of, one of them Negro books. Come on, young. <laughs> color purple, man. No, no. Raisin it was the Raisin. It was a oh, Negro book. You know what? The Godfather books was so good. The books were. The book was good. Number one, it basically covered part of Godfather. T- too and the movie was good too so that one's hard i was gonna say the help oh see i didn't read that you read the, you read the help you read the help brandon first of all um i tried to read the help <laughs> <laughs> the movie was better i didn't like the movie though either so the thing is i could finish the movie because the movie was gonna play whether or not i was asleep or not but this book kept hitting me in the face while i'm trying to read it because <laughs> i kept falling asleep on it and I can't, I never could. That's why I tried reading the Bible. I kept falling asleep on that. Come on. You know, like back, like maybe what, when Harry Potter was really popular, like, oh, you got to read these Harry Potter books. Yeah. Now, even if you're an adult, you're like, nah, not really. Not in the magic sci-fi, <laughs> none of that. <laughs> no, nah, you got to read it though. It was kind of like that, with, but it was the helps. That's why he's like, oh, give me the, gave me the book and you should read this. And I was like, all right, let me try this. Dude, I tried, I tried like six times. I fell asleep every time. Middle of the day, late at night, early in the morning, I was asleep. This <laughs> no, I was literally oh. tried to work, read the books, some books, the books of the Bible, couldn't understand them. I Too got one. These and thou's. I tried to uh, read the King James version. Fear and Loathing, it's Las Vegas. I read that book and watched the movie and really enjoyed the movie. We enjoyed the book too, but really enjoyed the movie. We'll say The Hitchhiker's oh. Guide to the Galaxy is a great book, yeah. but the movie was boring as shit. I like the movie a lot. I like you the like movie. the movie? movie is, it was, it's quirky. Man, enough. I thought it was just, man. I, and I, I like most death in it, and I like the robot. You know what? You know who it's, I don't it's, like? It's one of those British movies that you can't go into expecting to laugh. Well, I went to expecting to laugh, <laughs> and only the robot made me laugh and most death most of the, sometimes. I'm like, man, this, this is that British dry humor that this is the, the main protagonist Hollywood... left a lot to be wanting. He was very. Yes. And this, and I was like, man, this is the reason why Hollywood's in L.A. and not in the U.K. <laughs> Dry humor don't go well on TV, man. You can't do that shit for two hours, man. I never hard. heard of that with 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 Yasin May in it. Yes, no, no, man. no, no. You Most like it, Pedro? It. You like it, Pedro? What's the What's the name? Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I love the depressed robot. That was hilarious. He was yeah. hilarious. Well, that was what's the name that played Snape, right? Fine, I'll do it, but I won't be, I won't enjoy it. Who's the actor that played Professor Snape? Uh, then in the, the Hans, the main Hans, Tim, from, Robin, Tim Robbins. No, no, Hans from uh, from the original Die Hard, the main, yeah, the villain, wasn't uh, it? Uh, what's his name? Is not something Robbins or something? No, wow. Alan yes, Rickman, Alan Rickman. You're right, okay, that's yeah, cool. Tim something, <laughs> yeah. Tim Robbins. Anyways, uh, y'all gonna go see the new uh, iteration of I Am Legend with Will Smith and Michael B. Jordan? No, Absolutely we'll not. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay. All right. All right. So, no, sounds like all I, I kind of wish I didn't see the one with Will Smith in it. Sounds <laughs> like we're all gonna see it then. Will Smith and that damn dog. <laughs> we'll, we'll report live here. We'll do a live app of us, of us watching it. Oh, uh, I'm trying to figure out why the hell did I watch that movie? It was like. I didn't watch it in the movie theater. Because I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't like, I don't like zombie movies. Yeah, never liked them. Didn't. Well, just... the, the book is not a zombie movie, that, and that's the craziest thing. That's I want to tell people yeah. this: it, they weren't zombies in the fucking book. They were just, they just had coronavirus, right? <laughs> <laughs> Basically. In other news, 
A Utah Airbnb host found a novel way to help Ukrainians. Compliments of desert.com. Deseret. Deseret. Desert News. Discreet News. Discreet News? What is that? Man, it was some shitty ass website you sent that thing from <laughs> that I'm worried that was going to get a virus on my phone. Shout out. I didn't know. Was it porn? Yeah, it said discreet and shit. I'm like, is this porn? What the fuck? Is that? I think it's Desiree. I was, I was hoping, you know, I was like, well, maybe Jared just flipped the coin and maybe there's going to be some Ukrainian women seeking some shelter. OK, let me click on this. Man, it, was, it was that bullshit you sent. Uh, anyways, uh, Ukrainian was- women are fine. Finest in Europe. They are. Uh, I got a Ukrainian. I got a re- Ukrainian woman trying to recruit me for a uh, carrier back in your neck of the woods, uh, Brandon. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I told Thank you all about you last week, didn't I? Maybe. Okay. Very, very, be- <laughs> very beautiful Ukrainian woman. I'm gonna marry her and send her back to Russia. <laughs> Tell me, he didn't just say <laughs> that. She's a Russian spy. <laughs> uh, all right. Well. Uh, a South Lake, uh, wait, a South Lake resident, uh, Sarah Brown, looking for a way to connect and help and offer help to people in the Ukraine. And she found a way by using one of her strengths. She actually is a manager of Airbnbs or is a consultant and, and manages a couple of Airbnbs herself. And she had the great idea of donating money directly to Airbnb owners in the Ukraine by signing up for no stays. And so they book a no stay where they're basically booking the Airbnb for a couple of days or however many days they can afford, sending that money directly to them and without any intent of staying. Um, Airbnb has also gotten uh, behind this and has waived all fees to anybody being uh, housed in Ukraine or any of the Airbnb fees that they have for the for the owners or the managers in the Ukraine. So uh yeah, man, sending some love, and uh, I think it's raised over two million dollars over the last week. What do you guys think about that? So it raised money for the people that can afford to have maybe dual properties in <laughs> Ukraine, and they probably aren't even in Ukraine. Probably been on Crete or some shit for the last two years. I mean, it's all right. I don't want to shit on it because they're doing something, but let's not act like they rushing in like like aid in the nineties to some, to Ethiopia or some shit. Right. Let's not like act like they doing that much, man. As we know, most Airbnb owners own that's it's a second property or a third or a fourth, not to say that it might not be some of them out there that could use the money, but shit. I mean, I mean, uh, yeah, but I mean, fuck, it ain't like stores are open when they're shit getting bombed stores ain't fucking open. And I don't think, I don't think motherfuckers <laughs> taking train tickets when you're yeah. trying to leave town right now. So, I mean, it's a nice gesture, but it's an empty gesture. You are a hater. (laughs) Exactly. Go ahead, Brett. It's shit on what I just said. I I, I don't I don't really get what's going on. I really I don't either. <laughs> I, Jared was talking to me about this in the beginning before we started recording. I, I didn't understand. All right. So, so you understand what I, I'm saying though, Jared? Is yeah, I understand. Shit empty I guess these Negroes just don't understand what the concept. So no, they're putting no, I see, no stakes. No I, no, I get it. Like, oh, I'm gonna sign up for this Airbnb in Ukraine right now. Yeah. But I'm not as gonna say that because obviously I can't get to Ukraine right now. Yeah, I'm not. Right. No reason I'm not flying. Yeah, obviously, you shouldn't <laughs> want to get to Ukraine right now. Right. I, I, no, I understand it as a charity, but it was, right. I mean, this is the only story you came up with, Jared. But he's and, like, and no, this, I just see the giving pop- the, opening new pathways, connecting with people, and supporting uh, people abroad. So, Jared, you know, we need to shoot dude. and stop the Russians from invading Ukraine. Are you talking about some Airbnb happy shit? Yeah, talking about he talking about somebody paying somebody two hundred dollars that might already be dead. <laughs> might already be dead. All, know is, all you Negroes know is peace. <laughs> he does not understand the world. They just turned into JD man right there. He turned into JD, but he's right. <laughs> I mean, Dude, you, know, you can say what you but you can't prove me wrong. This Airbnb story is the same. It's just like it's just like donating blood. I had to talk to Duck and be like, the Duck loves donating blood to Red Cross. It makes him feel like he's doing something to help out, right? And I'm like, look, motherfucker, the motherfuckers need blood are dead already, right? So you will donate blood to Red Cross. All they're going to do is sell it to hospitals out here. They always wait for some tragedy to happen. Be like, donate blood, man. Hey, guess what? Uh, oil rig blew up off of Louisiana. Donate blood. Man, fuck you, Red Cross. Nonprofit <laughs> making billions of dollars. It, th- this is the same, Jared, as if you were to go out there and be like, hey, I got something for you, you Ukrainians. I'm going to throw a bunch of uh, Mardi Gras beads out there on the ground. That's going to help you out right now. 
it's a nice gesture, but it's a hollow. I'm gonna say the person who started this has some very particular experience with money laundering. Like I would just say, hey, I'm gonna give you this twenty dollars for I this need- soda, right? <laughs> right. I need. I honestly need this woman on our side. She might be able to help us monetize. Honestly, I think we have a great scam, right? Number There's a one- reason why she's on discreet, Jared. <laughs> dot com, whatever that shit was. No, no, Desiree is a new. It's a it's a news article. It's on other articles, but it's the one didn't that- have anything to do with porn either. It upset me. <laughs> I like booty. <laughs> Hey, uh, according to what Pedro is saying, I think uh, we need Pedro to walk up to uh, Vladimir Putin and be like, why are you invading Ukraine? You can't even hold on to Harlem. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) You can't hold on to Kremlin. Uh, And then, uh, all right, Nim Money, my scam consultant, said this is an easy thing. We set up, use a VPN, Brandon. We got your VPN. We set up in (laughs) Kiev, okay? We get some photos. We present like we have a home, a house, or an apartment. <laughs> just a bunch of rent. broken bricks. <laughs> just, just, just like we, got, yeah, we could do that too. We could go real sob story. Be like, this is our apartment. We would like to Airbnb because we broke and we got to rebuild after this war is over. And then we have people start sending us money. It's raised over two million dollars in the last week. Come on now, you guys. You want to? You guys in on it with me? Huh? Huh? Nah, you, you do that, man. Net money yeah, says he he can work it. He can work it for us. You and Net money gonna be just like homeboy in that prison in the prison cell. <laughs> it's some real old jeans. You gonna be putting pictures on Instagram. Like you ain't gonna be seeing no sunsets no more. <laughs> be po- you gonna be posing on the back of the toilet stool. <laughs> so somebody's gonna have to give us some money. <laughs> Pedro, Pedro gonna call me right before the police raid raid the apartment. Be like, I know you don't like it, but you need to stop shucking and jiving. We got a problem. <laughs> Get that VPN ready. Bro. <laughs> we gonna set up an Airbnb in the Ukraine. Uh, in other news, uh, uh, Alexander uh, uh, the Usyk, Alexandri Usyk, and uh, v- Vasily Lomachenko, two Ukrainian boxers have joined the Ukrainian armed defense uh, this past week, along with another um, MMA fighter um, who is the is Yaroslav Amosov, an MMA fighter, current Bellator MMA welterweight mm. champion, also returned home to fight. So um, um, you're, and, missing, you're missing you're missing the Klitschko brother. And the one Klitschko. Are, so I, I forgot yeah. the Klitschko brothers also uh, are are the one of them is a mayor of a city, right? Um, and so uh, I don't yeah. know, but they real man. Uh, hey, I'm I'm about all that. You fight, you fight. They are, fight they are for taking your up fight arms. For your hey, man. You know what? I think that Ukraine is is showing that this whole draft system in the United States was using is definitely it's a, it's a it's an issue with the with the what is it the solidarity and the patriotism as a whole in your country. When you got you got the richest some of the richest motherfuckers being like, I'm staying to fight. I'm coming back home to fight. And in America, you got to draft Negroes off farms, and they can barely even spell America. These are two America. different wars, Jared. So you can't compare them. It's apples to oranges right now. Don't. I guess it's a bad comparison, Jared. I know <laughs> you you like shitting on things of American values and patriotism, but this is the wrong time to do it, and the wrong thing to compare it to. I would say, well, there, there's only there's only 44 million people in Ukraine, basically. Yeah. And yeah. the way it works is if you don't fight, the, one of these re- Ukrainians will slit your throat your, themselves. Like they were just like, all right, <laughs> obviously you don't care. So let me go ahead and, and you're take talking you about The European countries also don't have the population of we have and shit like that. And, you know, that's the reason why they have like automatic civil service as soon as you grab turn 18. Mm-hmm. Right. Automatic two years, three years, one year, a- almost majority of, of of European countries have that. So. I mean, you can't compare it. And and we've and the United States hasn't been invaded to a point where someone would be like, oh, man, well, let's let's show our patriotism. Right. I mean, not since I guess the only closest we came to a situation like this would be maybe the Mexican-American War or, or the times when Pancho Villa would, would lead raids across the border. But nothing. That was, a, nothing that, was a, that was Pearl Harbor was the only time. It was Pearl like, Harbor. Oh. Yeah. Pearl, you know, Pearl Harbor and the Bay of Pigs. Probably, or the Cuban Missile Crisis. Bay of Pigs. Crazy, you know? Well, they, they never came over. We were just scared of shit and building people from Florida, building shelters underground and shit. Oh, man, I'm telling you. Well, well, it's a it's a it's an interesting thing to see these uh, fighters, professional fighters, some of them at the peak of their um, at the peak of their the height of their careers. 
putting down what they're doing and returning to their country to join the defense. Um, and, you know, I don't know how much do y'all have y'all read up about what's going on and the reason why they've been invaded by why, what is the reason based upon what you've been told or what you've been able to read? What is the reason why Russia is even invading the Ukraine? From what I understand is NATO was building air bases in Ukraine. So basically maybe there was, they were starting to militarize Ukraine in a, in a different way, right? So Ukraine has their own army or whatever, but uh, NATO decided they wanted to build a base in Ukraine. Okay. And Russia was like, this is too close to us. Um, especially after like this, like Ukraine and Russia, well, Russia has decided that Ukraine is a part of Russia. So much like China and, you know, what I forget. I want China <laughs> done to Hong Kong and Taiwan. Mm-hmm. Basically, basically mm-hmm. China and every other Asian country. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> right. But they're like, all right, cool. And they, they've gone back and forth about it for a long time. But yeah, once they decide, once Ukraine decided to let NATO build this base, yeah, they, Russia was they, like, oh, this they, act, this is an act of aggression. I don't have well, a Russian yeah, accent. Well, yeah, it's all about the what, 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 would, what would Tyree say about my Russian accent? It says, hot slack, smack back, smoke, beer zack, mech And just for that, he should get his throat slitted in any, any, any Slavic speaking country. The- so one thing I've noticed is there's been a lot of like, there's been a lot of like positive or like support Ukraine, support Ukraine. And then on certain pages on when I'm on the interwebs, uh, there's a there's a certain um, things that are like, well, there's hella racism in Ukraine. Look at the racism. I don't know if you all have seen the things about the African students in Ukraine um, and what's going on with some of the African students in Ukraine, not, mm-hmm. you know, being able to get out of the country, being, you know, what I'm saying pushed aside for um ukrainian men men or women and children uh and black women not being able to get on trains or get get out of the country basically being forced to stay un- until everyone else was evacuated uh and i've seen a lot of uh kind of i guess cynical responses online people being like this is why we this is what you know i, I don't give a fuck about these people i don't this that and the other <laughs> and so like there's a part of me which is like i can kind of like understand their sentiment but i can also be like man war and war sucks you know i anti-war War is also a tool of humanity, civilizations. It's 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 it happens, and so uh, as much as you know, you can be anti it. It's it's still going to happen. It's still bound to happen, and it's still happening. What do you guys fall on like the the scope of like what would I guess my the question that I have as a black black person or African American? Uh, what is the bandwidth? you as a black person, you know, saying feel is like the right amount of bandwidth to give to this, or do you feel kind of disconnected from it? I can't control how other people feel about it, right? Uh, whether they're African-Americans, whether they're other black people feel like this and like, oh man, well, fuck them, they're going to be racist. I mean, it's not a good positive attitude to have, right? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, I don't wish this shit on anybody, right? My country being invaded, you know, you're not knowing if that you sleep and that's going to be your last time you see your family members, any shit like that. So I, I obviously don't side with these other people, regardless of their race and how they feel if they're, and, and this is coming from a very, you know, I, I, I'm not, I'm not a person that's bleeding empathy, but at the same time, I mean, how can you not in a situation like this for someone else wants to be like, Oh man, see they race, but you know what, man, we could, we could, we could flip that coin anyway in any, in everywhere. Right. I'm sure there's some white people saying now that all this fucking crime happening is like inner cities, man, this is what you guys wanted. You defund it. You want to defund the police. That's not the right attitude to have. So, you know, I'm just going to try to be like, hey, man, I want this shit to end. Want, want, I don't know how it's going to end. And I pray for the people out there. Instead of being like, oh, man, they treating black people ain't been able. I, hey, man, it's going to be tough. I'm sure there's. Uh, that might be true. I'm not saying that's not true. I'm saying there's also some white Ukrainians. There's also probably maybe some Chinese people, Ukrainians that's been unable to get on trains because the shit's full, man. People running for their lives, man. What's the percentage of the minority in Ukraine? Not much. Somebody look that up. I'll look it up right now, but it ain't much. I mean, yeah. it's gonna, it ain't so like out here. Here's the thing. You're, you're, it ain't like you're going in the country. The you're in the country trying to better yourself. You got to play by their rules. Um, that's the unfortunate part of Africans. I'm going to sound like J.D. Manning here. Africans not getting together and coming together and, and allowing their land. Uh, I mean, it's a root problem. We, we always 
Damn, you about to blame Africans, Pedro? I'm about to blame Africans, just like they blame Mexicans. Coming over here to have a better life. Hey, keep keep the people out. You you gotta create your own. Keep all the odd people out. You let China, you let Russia, you let England, you let all these people come into your land, digging your land, and now you want to live over where they live. So living in that beautiful place that have all those elephants and giraffes and all that nice dust and sand and dirt. <laughs> and you didn't build upon it. You didn't build not one boat. You didn't build no rivers, no streams, no plumbing, nothing. The most the black people have ever done, they did it here in America under white people's help. When they were in Africa, they didn't do nothing. So you said black hey, Ukrainians should be mad at that. Hey, hey, hey. yeah. <laughs> That's definitely all the Africans over there. So you play by their rules. This is what we're doing in America. We're playing the American rules. We have no base. I watched Malcolm X over the Black History Month, and I was listening to a lot of stuff he said. I was like, wow. Wow. He just, everybody, every African American or every African is lost. It just shows how lost Africans are. When it came to America, when it came to fighting, at least you see how the Ukraines are fighting, they ain't going for that shit. They're not going for it. I don't care if damn if you got a nuclear missile, you're not just gonna come over here. You might win the battle. We might die, but you 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 know, you might win the war, but we're gonna fight for it. And I wish there was more tribes like uh what's what's the African tribe that uh, ran the white folks off? You talk about the Hutus and the Tutsis. Look what's going on in Zimbabwe now with Mugabe. We got a problem, black folk. And I'm almost tired of people complaining about it. It's life. It's the game that we just cards we are dealt with. All right, are you ready to yeah, hear all this? All our prison systems are all filled with black folks. You know why? And they miss it. Exactly. They, they, and they, you know what? There's like four more on this block. They need to come arrest. Come on. Ain't but a, this, it's a rooted problem. We're gonna go to another country expecting yeah, equality. Yeah, you know what the root? It. You know what the root problem is? They ain't arrested them and beat them enough. Come on, man. Those two that tried to steal my catalytic converter, they arrest them and beat them. <laughs> send them to Ukraine. <laughs> I want you send them there. Send them there, butt naked. Once I'm naked, no bullet can affect me. Front line, stop. All on the front line. You, you tie them up and you you put those two that tried to steal my catalytic <laughs> converter. And you tell them I'm a road. This tank right over you try to steal it off of this. Once I'm naked, I could disappear. Yeah. Well, the reason why I was asking this question, I, I it was lo loaded because it's hard because it's very nuanced yeah. um, way that people yeah. are sharing information, but also the way people are, you know, shaping perspective on things that are going on. Like it's something I noticed when they when they had over the this past year, they had the attacks on Asians and there was a the stop Asian hate movement. And I just kept seeing people who are just being super cynical and it's like black people, you know what I'm saying? Who are either like fed up with it or maybe they're not even black people. They're just bots who were just trying to be incendiary. You know what I'm saying? Somebody who's out there trying to pose the black person. It's another conspiracy brother side to think of. They're trying to find somebody to get a dick to. But like different people who are posting stuff that is like super cynical being like, oh, this Asian people, this, that. And they show them videos of Asian people doing <laughs> racist things to black people or being racist or, or uncouth to black people. And I'm like, yeah, like, that shit happens. That shit happens to every which way. Everywhere. And I think that if if it is, if you think it's just a, a, you know, the man trying to propagate something on media to control us and get us to be distracted by this one thing and they have, it's, it's an agenda behind it, then I can't talk, like, there's no, there's no way around that. Like, the agenda's the agenda. If everything's part of the agenda, then, like, you know, the, the, it is what it is. But at the same time, like, within our humanity and within our care as people, you know what I'm saying, you see bad things happening to people um, and it's brought to your attention. You should you know, like it, it's hard to not feel bad. And I think that's something that we shouldn't lose track of, especially in this yeah. viral comment section age where we can, you know, be so cynical it's and negative about things. It's absolutely terrible, Jared. These people are, are being exiled from their homes. They um, they're basically being forced into even a worse situation. It, they're in a wait and look situation. You gotta wait to see if we can get you to safety. And it's scary. It's extremely scary. I can't imagine my life being like that. I would want to go fight just on a certain fact that, hey, let me help you out on a certain fact because I don't want to live life like this. If I gotta live like this, I might as well die for something. Mm -hmm. And I, I would, you know, if that was my place of home or whatever, I would, I would just, I would just join a fight. 
Because what do you got to live for? Running, you've been running your whole life, you know. You running, might as well try running, to fight, running. try to fight for something. Yeah. And to be wanting to be wanting to be exiled to let them leave the country is the same as you know, you thought you was going to get some equal treatment in respect of that. And you was already a third, second class citizen. I don't know what they were expecting. Maybe they weren't expecting. Maybe, 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 you know, we don't, none of us here has the immigrant story. Maybe they they knew it was going to be tough and they knew, but I mean, you're right. Some of them, I mean, like, what was it, their last gold medal, a black Ukrainian? They were, they were like born out there from African refugees and things like that. So I think they, they, you know what? They live in life, Jared, you know? You live mm-hmm. life every day. You can't talk about it and post it up every minute. You got to live it. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. No, I just I saw that. And that was something that like struck a chord with me. It was like this this kind of cynical back and forth. You know, I have friends along all different, you know, kind of lenses of the spe- or parts of the spectrum who are like, this is this is, uh, you know, saying this is it's a BS war, but also it's a, it's, it's being, you know, saying prop, propped up because it's, you know, directly counter to American interests. So and American and the EU's interests. So they're trumping it up, but there's motherfuckers who are getting killed. Like, you know, saying they bring up the the Israel Palestine thing. They bring up stuff going on in Africa that doesn't get reported, you know, saying in these wars that are going on that are underreported. And I'm like, I get that. I get that. Um, And and it sucks that these things are so underreported that we hear very little or don't know anything about them. But we do know about this. And so it's like it's it's that it's that balance of like what we do know about is what we can also you know what I'm saying feel for or have a, a a perspective and 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 actually like you know saying show show some human humanity for I, I don't know I just was kind of off put but also like really weirded out seeing the the cynical stuff and like kind of resonating with it partially but also being like I can't I can't overly just commit myself to be like yeah that's right well like no no that's it's not who I want to be that's not you know what I'm saying like if MLK and Malcolm X and you know all these people who you know what I'm saying through our struggle uh, through a civil rights movement or through uh you know what I'm saying getting emancipation from slavery or whatever you want to call that emancipation but um if we just turn cynical every time something was everybody every time somebody was racist or every time there was an example of racism towards us we black people would still be in chains in uh sports news in sports news Rob Manfred came out and announced that the MLB season will not be starting on time. He officially canceled the first two series. Um, Over 90 games of the first two series will not be played because of the lockout going into the season. Uh, What do you guys think about that? Uh, Personally, I think this is amazing for the A's since they seem to peak a month before the season's over anyway. I feel like this might be the time they cut get out, over the hump. cut out that that zero nine start. A month start. Of the season, they might do something this year. Oh my god, they had such a bad start to the season, and then they then they faltered at the end. Like they went on a run where you're like, oh, now they're gonna be good again, and they're like, oh, nope, 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 they're mediocre. We suck again. <laughs> we suck again. Oh, a full season, we can't do it. Um. Anyways, um, the the main arguments or the main areas of contention is. Basically, the player minimum salary, um, which is if you look at it, it's actually kind of egregious. Last season was five hundred seventy thousand was the minimum salary. Currently, the MLB is proposing seven hundred thousand dollar minimum salary with a ten thousand dollar per year increase. MLBPA wants it starting at seven twenty five with twenty thousand dollars per year increase. But when you look at it, one really glaring uh, statistic was MLB players' base salary was less than that of Obviously, the NBA, which is at nine hundred twenty-five thousand a year starting base salary, but it was also below the NFL, which is at six hundred sixty-six or six hundred sixty thousand, which is like I could see, you know, maybe the NFL. But you know who was also making more than MLB players? NHL players at seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. So uh, <laughs> NHL minimum salary was thirty percent more than what the MLB minimum salary was. I don't know. What do you guys think about that? What's the percentage of players on that minimum salary, though? Because I feel like nobody in baseball on that minimum salary except for fools you never heard of. CBSSports.com says 62% of players um, on the 2021 opening day rosters um, had salaries under a million dollars. 32% had salaries under $600,000. So basically, uh, 32% were making the minimum, minimum salary. A third of the league made something close to the minimum salary is what they're saying. Tell me how many of that in football. I don't have that. This is talking about um, baseball. 
the contention is that baseball players play more games. Their season is longer. Granted, the sports are different. The revenues are different. But they're saying that although the MLB had MLB's revenue wasn't reflecting the minimum pay that the players were getting, especially since the MLB revenue is much greater than that. It's going up. Mm -hmm. And hockey was making seven hundred. Hockey don't make shit. And that is like, it's like, hey, man, hockey don't make that much money, but their players are making 750 starting base. And for some reason, we're making less than them. I don't know. I mean, but the, the thing about baseball is that your career is longer, though. And that's what the owners always went off of. Baseball had kind of this unwritten rule for all the other collective bargainings was you'll get paid at the end. And they have in the past. Like the problem is in the last like 10 years that are seven years or so, they haven't pay, paid the older players. Who yeah. like pay, people like let's say for example Mike Trout right the thing used to be like hey your first seven years in the league you're still on that crappy salary we they 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 play you so you they have an extra year of arbitration like they did Chris Bryant right and they play those games but then when you start reaching your thirties you're gonna get paid into you know for the rest of you're gonna get paid fat and that's what used to happen like people like Al Leiter who seven of the years career, he was serviceable. And then he gets paid after that. Right. Mm-hmm. Or you look at pool holes, pool holes was the same way. He paid like the, the first, his first six years, he made no money. And then after that, you know, yeah. the next 13 years, the man, the man made, the man made like $800 million in the next 13, 13 yeah. years. Right. Yeah. And that's what yeah. baseball used to do. The problem is the owners have gotten greedy and they haven't been playing. Like, what was that two years ago with the free agents? Like Eric Hosmer signed right away. As soon as free agency opened, Eric Hosmer signed and no one else signed. Yeah. Well, was <laughs> like, it Dallas know? Keiko was like a was like a 15 game winner, a ace almost yeah, no ace one signed him. Nobody and, signed him until late. And then the, he sat into most of the season. Yeah, the owners have gotten greedy with that. Yeah, right? even and like how the, they work that. They they've been they have the owners have gotten way more prudent with their with spending on what they're gonna buy or the players they're gonna, you know, pay in free agency, which I think is smart for them to be a little bit more, you know, prudent with that. But when the revenue is going up, um, you also have to have the the, the, the player floor, the, the minimum salary cap should also be going up. No, well, I think the same thing ha- is happening in every sport. Like there's zero middle class, right? That's really what the what the fight is, right? Like there's people who get paid minimum, right? They want to raise that floor. But then there's Bryce Harper's and Mike Trout's are going to get billions of dollars mm-hmm. and take up a huge portion of that. Exactly that cap space but then you have this luxury tax that's supposed to make a competitive balance right but that money doesn't go to the other teams to increase the minimum wage for those teams like it doesn't get like that money does not directly influence those other those other those no other the factors. problem is it goes to those teams but those owners are very cheap right and they need to be a minimum because pittsburgh only paid like this past year like 50 something million on salary right yeah mm-hmm. they got the dodgers who you know, had like the six or third highest salary in, in the Yankees, of course. And it's like they're paying money to go to these teams that aren't using it. Mm-hmm. Right. On Exa- salary, which is supposed to be used for. Exactly. Um, yeah. And so you just have a bunch of dudes that you have a bunch of guys who are not going to be ever make the 300 or never going to sign the $300 million contract. And you got a bunch of dudes on, on, on their basically rookie deals, right? They they have the longest <laughs> control. Teams have the longest control in any sport, right? They got six years or seven years or whatever of control of the of the players' rights. I mean, I get that it takes a lot longer to develop a baseball player sometimes, right? But we've seen mm-hmm. a lot of dudes come in at 18, 19 years old, mm-hmm. play games. You've seen a lot of 20 year olds make make <laughs> have impactful starts and impactful hits. Um, yeah, I think that's really the main thing. And everybody's basically playing like the Lakers, right? You got four really good players you pay a lot of money to and everybody else on these one-year deals. <laughs> and it's like, we're going to roll the dice. Or you're on the flip side of that. You're like Pittsburgh, you're like the A's and everybody's basically pay, making $2 million a year. And we're going to do the cybermetric, <laughs> or cybermetric thing and you know, see what happens. Like, oh, I'm going to outsmart everybody. Yeah, oh, everybody. fuck the same. Aaron, Aaron, what was the article <laughs> you sent about baseball has a problem beyond just the greedy owners? It's the, it's the, it's it's the, the game. Way that, it's the game. But the game's play. It's just the sabermetrics in the way it's changed the game is the bigger problem. This is normal. This is collective bargaining. Uh, for me, I agree. It's, it's millionaires versus billionaires. This is normal. This is what this collective bargaining system brings. This is what we have as our own union, Jared, right? Mm. You give, you give, and you take. That's why it's called collective bargaining. It works for me. I think people just get upset because they're like, oh man, they didn't reach an agreement. And now we're sitting here and we're losing games. 
Yeah. I think the owners are fine. I think the owners, they didn't come to the bargaining table during all during the off season. So they could lose some games and save some money. Cause don't forget they paid the players full salaries during that pandemic year. Right. Mm. So it's collective bargaining, but for me, the baseball bigger pro- issues are the way the games play saving metrics, the way everyone only swings up and try to hit home runs, how everyone's shifting and how the game is bu- dull. The game is dull. There's no one on base. There's Ooh. there's takes forever to pitch. Well, yeah. and, that, and that goes into everything else, how they're managing their money, because you have a different group of owners who care about just the numbers, right? They're like, okay, I got this dude on the cheap. How much longer is he going to be good? All right, I don't, he can just leave in free agency. As opposed to like, oh, he's a part of our culture. He's a part of our team. They're just really just looking at numbers. And, and making sports is not up. about culture anymore. Well, I guess it's a little bit about culture, but they don't do culture no more. Well, Man, I mean, the, unless you're the Miami the, Heat. I mean, the owners are the owners, <laughs> right? Like somebody has to be looking at the books, make sure they can keep the lights on. But at the yeah. same time, <laughs> but at the same time, like you had owners who did like, know know the players personally and like really want to build a culture around their business like they might overpay for some people sometimes mm-hmm. just to sort of keep their culture intact. Yeah, I'm about to tell you a shocker which team had the most homegrown players the last the last year for baseball here's a hint yep and they also had him for the last like five years they they have the most homegrown players on their roster and um, it's like majority of the roster the Braves nope the Dodgers the Dodgers. And it's funny because Dodgers have like the second highest payroll and everyone thinks, oh man, you just buy players. Well, you know, I mean, they traded for Mookie Baylock. I mean, Mookie Betts, excuse me. Uh, <laughs> they didn't trade. They didn't make a trade in Mookies. prison. <laughs> <laughs> At least yeah. I got that right. <laughs> but majority of their income goes to the players to stay. I mean, that was a trade. That was a rental. Everyone has a rental, except yeah. the A's. You're just not used to it because you grew up an A's fan. Like, oh, that, what, what is that? If you grew up in Toronto, well, no. LA if you grew now. up, if you grew up in Toronto as the break, hold on, you know, hold, on. hold on, Aaron, hold on. We got, we have to do a little just brief aside. Brandon, I don't know if you noticed, but Aaron has become, it's turning into a snob with LA uh, sports. Um, if you guys don't know, we didn't put it on the, the, I haven't put the episode out, but Aaron was like. No, nah, my name for this for this Zoom call for the Super Bowl episode is going to be all the years I've been a part of titles as a L.A. fan of sports. He's like, man, look at all these dates I got. Look at all these years. You know, you know who brought that out, Jerry? I used you know to having a out. team pay for play. Yeah, I know I'm no. not used to it, nigga. Why no, you rentals, pay, though? The rentals are Toronto. When I grew up, Toronto, the Toronto Blue Jays were the team that always rented players trying to get a title. Mm-hmm. Every year they were in the buyer's market. They had a great farm system. They were in the buyer's market and get one or two players trying to push them over the edge. And then it finally happened two years in a row. They were the team to me that got a lot of rentals. I never count a rental. A one-year rental never counts because you're, one, usually you, you don't pay the whole salary. So it don't really, really go against the cap. It's not even a rental for a whole year. It's like a rental for, uh, you know, for a month. You know what? No, no less need says about that. What? Fuck them picks. Exactly. <laughs> I agree. And you know why I, I started becoming an L.A. snob about the numbers, Jared? It's because of this. Because I'm the person that sits there. I quiet. You you watch games with me. I'm quiet. I don't I don't root. Uh, if I'm if I'm watching it with you and it's the Cowboys, I'm, I'm you know, I'm I'm being conscious. Uh, I'm conscious of who I'm watching with. I'm being honest and things like that. But I don't get the same treatment. I didn't get the same treatment, and especially from Niner fans this postseason. It wasn't, it wasn't A's fans. I like A's fans. It was Niner fans and Giants fans. The, it pissed me off about when the Dodgers first started getting good again. I was with Jason, and he wore an Oakland A's hat. And I remember we went to that like place that used to get the um, SIE bowls that was on San Pablo. We mm-hmm. walk in there, and the guy's like, oh, man. You guys are doing well. It's one of those years where the A's are just on fire as usual before they collapse. And, you know, Jared, I don't like the whole you guys speak because I until I get a paycheck from a team, you know, I, I'm not one that you can talk to be like, hey, how are you guys doing? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the Dodgers are doing well is what I would say. <laughs> and so he said, you guys. And I said, oh, I'm not an A's fan. I was like, they're cool, though. I'm not an A's fan. I'm a Dodger fan. And this dude was like, man, fuck the Dodgers, man, because he had a Giants hat on. And just start cursing. And I'm like, I just want you to make my fucking food, dude. This shit don't. <laughs> That's a that's a sports team, dude. Get over this shit, right? <laughs> Fuck you. I hope you fucking lose. Well, I'm not playing. I'm not fucking playing. I don't own the team. I don't get a paycheck from them. So you hope I lose. Okay. So dealing with that, that that's been stuck in my crawl. And then I get to every 49er fan. You had nothing wearing a jersey. 
before every uh, every Friday be in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. You had him and other people <laughs> reminding me how many times the Rams has lost consecutively to the Niners. Now, here's the funny thing. Remember, I went to go with Nathan and his brothers and all the Niner fans to watch Niner versus Rams at uh, where did we go, Jared? Raleigh's. Raleigh's. I was quiet. I wasn't tripping. I even told people I didn't expect the Rams to win that game. They don't play well against the Niners. Not with this team, this and that. Brandon, it's the same day that Jared starts an argument for no fucking reason with a Cowboy and a Raider fan, right? <laughs> and, and so he already has people on the side. And Jared, he asked the Raider fan one question. Do you support Derek Carr? And the guy said, who was drunk? I love Derek Carr. So Jared <laughs> starts to argue. Now, mind you, Brandon, the guy sitting next to my left. Jared's to my right across a big ass table. Right. So I'm just getting spit on the whole fucking time as Jared is arguing with this. These guy. are COVID times, by the way. Or like exactly. <laughs> I went straight home, threw those clothes straight in the washing machine, washed them shits on high by themselves on hot water and had to hop in the shower. Right. Soon as I got home, didn't walk the dog. I was like, sorry, pups. You got to wait till we take care of this shit because of Jared. I mean, he was a cool guy. It wasn't like a mean argument. It was a fun argument, but it spit was flying all oh, over. Yeah, he was definitely mouth, juicy. Right? He had a little juicy mouth. Did I, I left. I left right at, during the, after the argument. I was like, dude, I got to go home. <laughs> Fuck the Rams and Niner game. I got to go home. I got to go, I gotta go home and get my affairs in order. Shit. Dude, you should have seen how much sand sanitizer I used at their front door. You would have thought I was bathing in it, Brad. I put some on the he back He started of my using neck. like aftershave. <laughs> yep, I put it all over my neck. Oh, and then here's the thing that Jared also left out. I was in a staff meeting before the, week, the before the Super Bowl, right? Two for a Super Bowl. One of the people in the meetings is a is a Bengals fan. He was born out there, but he was raised out here. But he's a Bengals fan. Always has this Bengal jacket that he wear in the meetings. Oh, three people who are Niner fans. One person uh, starts off with one person. Evan yells, "Man, yeah, John. I just want to give a special shout out to John. He ain't never been a fair weather fan." I'm like, "Oh, okay. Backdoor trolling right now." All right. Mm-hmm. A fair weather fan. He always been Cincinnati since I've known him. I'm rooting for you guys in that Super Bowl. Go out there and beat them. Sorry, ass Rams. Now, I know these guys are Niner fans. This is the Thursday after the Niners beat the Rams beat the Niners. I didn't say anything in this meeting. It was supposed to be good at the order. And somehow we talking about the Bengals and everyone's <laughs> yelling about sorry ass Rams. And I said, oh, OK, OK. I'm going to have to put this out there. I'm going to put all these numbers across my, and guess what? In that meeting too, Jared, I put all the numbers out there. I mean, I, I figured out a way and where I needed to not have spaces. And I even included the LA Kings in there. <laughs> <laughs> Cutty corner shout outs, Cutty corner shout outs, Cutty corner shout outs is the segment we end the show on where we get a chance to rank a plane, talk about something that's pissing you off or Something that is positive in the world. Cutty corner shout outs. Cutty corner shout outs. It's 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 time. We're burning out. God, if you let it in, hell. So cold and bleeding now, now, now. I meant what it meant. Gonna let you down. He had sex with my mama. We're broken. <laughs> Aaron, do you have a cutty corner shout out? Yeah, I got a cutty corner shout out. My cutty corner shout out goes out to soccer hooliganism. Hooliganism, hooliganism. It struck again in Mexico this time. Um, between two teams, I don't want to say the names. One was like Quintaro, and I forgot the other team is, but. The fans just basically went crazy, beating each other with pipes, lead pipes, breaking down fences. You should see some of the, see the people, the fans' videos themselves, man, hitting each other. It was like a wrestling match, but actually real. You know, for all those adults that go, that go to WWE, it's fine when you take your 12-year-old son, but when you're there with your, when you're a 20-year-old son, you guys are just idiots. Just watch that and watch, and then you'll know what real chair hitting looks like. It was sad. You had a lot of fans really hurt, injured. Fans run on the field trying to get away. It was just just a riot in the stands. But you know what? I feel like soccer promotes this because they have the whole, like, you have to save so many seats for the other team. The other team's allowed to sell seats at your state. No, nah, man, none of that. Squeeze that shit, man. They're like, oh, the, the road supporters. No, ain't no road supporters. Man, you got your home fans and motherfuckers got to buy some up, some up ticket stub hub and, and spend a lot if they want to come see them. Because let me tell you, it's not a lot of shit talking when you're in the stands by yourself. 
That shit was ridiculous, man. I don't know what's that machismo. It was just ridiculous, man. You guys are at a fucking sporting event. People take so this my critical shot. I go to people taking sports too seriously, Jared. That want to tell me that I hope you fucking lose shit like that when I'm trying to buy an SI. I'm trying to support your business. You know what? They closed down and they closed down before the pandemic. Guess what? If you wasn't such an asshole, I would have been there more often buying goddamn SIE bows. So sports people, stop taking sports so goddamn seriously. I like sports. I like to talk sports. I don't need to fight over it. Brandon, oh, you, do you have a my, corner? My cutty corner shout out goes out to simps and people who care about them. And that is specifically directed to Kanye West. I took a break from the Kanye West drama for a couple of weeks only to return to more bullshit from this dude. So if you if you don't know, <laughs> if you don't know, uh, Kanye West and Kim Kardashian have um, have been divorced. He had an article written with his new girlfriend he met two days beforehand, <laughs> and I and now he has another girlfriend, who quote unquote girlfriend, who has another article written about them three days after they met. <laughs> so and I realized Kanye's paying people to be his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, because like, because in the because I remember reading the freaking article about uh the the first one, like Julia Fox or whatever, whoever that was. And she's like, oh, it was very intimidating meeting him. And they met on like like the 29th. And this article comes out on the second or some shit like that. Like it was very quick. Uh, and I was like, oh shit, like what, what in what world does this make sense? And I realized, oh shit, Kanye West is paying people to be his girlfriend. He's he's Hugh Hefner. But he's forty years. He's a forty year old famous black rapper. Like he can talk to people. Uh, I think so. I would hope he could talk to people <laughs> and to, and to date them. But apparently, that's not the way he wants to go about it. He said, "Hey, you can get famous. You're gonna be in a bunch of pictures this week. We're gonna go to a lot of dinners and in, in, in outdoor bar areas." And you don't <laughs> so, gotta even worry about me smashing because premarital sex is against me right now. It's See, against my religion. It's against my religion. It's, I'm still a married man. And technically. he's still married. He's still technically a married man. <laughs> and then uh, he's smashing then he, it out. And, and then funny. he has all and then I hear the music and he has all these really whack lines about the dude who's dating his ex-wife. He's really or not soon about to be it. ex-wife. Soon to be ex-wife. Oh yeah. What, whatever stage they are in. It always irks me like you know when like somebody like finds their spouse cheating on them. They get mad at the dude, and I'm like, dude, like that dude's not in a relationship with you. No, he ain't got nothing fucking... to do with you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah that... your wife yeah. has something to do with you. You should probably be mad at her. Yeah, yeah. Um, nothing to do with you <laughs> for sure. But yeah, and I was just like, I just hope I just feel bad for everybody who's influenced by this type of behavior. <laughs> in the sense, if somebody doesn't want to be with you, you just let them go, and you realize there's other fish in the sea. You gotta, you gotta be his support, man. You be like, I see you. I think, I think what you're trying to do is trying to build out a starting five, Kanye, and I want to support you in that. Okay. <laughs> we also got to take the toxic masculinity away from being mad Ooh. at so. Pete Davidson and making yourself look bad, man. Hey, so you haven't holes. seen. You obviously <laughs> haven't seen what the second one looked like, have you, brother? Oh no, I'm saying now. Oh, look, she now, looks dead on. Kim Kardashian. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, they got back together. Got oh, like, no, Kim well, I was. I bro- clone. Well, brothers up because I saw a clip on Instagram or something like that. Deal Hughley talking about it, and he was like, "You know what? If Kanye didn't make beats, he wouldn't get no women." And I was like, "Yeah, that's 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 very accurate. <laughs> that's the most <laughs> accurate thing I would I would probably say about him." Um, yeah, man, I just feel like I would like to encourage everybody who's in their in their teens and twenties. Yeah, let's gather and talk to people. I know it's kind of scary with this COVID thing. I know it's just generally kind of scary because you could try to talk to somebody and somebody else has a camera out. I get it. <laughs> it can be a little more per- it can feel a little more permanent. But you gotta develop these skills earlier so later you don't look stupid. I agree. And that you can and you can maybe find somebody who really likes you and they could be your girlfriend or your wife or whoever that whoever you want them to be or whatever you want to do Kim back he wants Kim back man. I'm just saying like just develop your social skills don't be going out here paying people to be your girlfriend I don't care how much money you got it looks stupid I agree, it, pay, I agree. you better off paying for a hooker and just having sex dude I'm, I'm I'm embarrassed for him and I'm and really what it comes down to I'm worried about his mental health not that he's crazy we all know that not that he's a little delusional we all know that but I think once he realizes how stupid he looks He's gonna be in a real bad place. No, he just needs to know. He needs to go back to the the church of JD Manning and just know that. Black people, 
Let me tell y'all something. If y'all don't ever hear me say preach again, they can kill me tomorrow. But let me tell you something. We're not going to ever get anywhere until we look into the mind of a black man. He doesn't think correctly. I don't care what he is. He can be a doctor. He can be an astrophysicist. The nigga ain't got no sense. The crazy <laughs> thing is, I expect that talk in a barbershop, maybe even coming to America three barbershop, right? He was at church. Speaking to the congregation. He was preaching. He said he, he he was so excited to say that nigga ain't got no sense. He said he could be an astro fizzle. He didn't finish the word. He just said, Astro fizzle, that nigga ain't got no sense. Let's go. I don't care what he is. He could be a doctor. He could be an astro fizzle. The nigga ain't got no sense. Astro fizzle, the nigga ain't got no sense. Out of softball. because he wanted to make sure that got out before they killed him tomorrow. That's weird. <laughs> My Cutty Corner shout out goes out to um, Adam Stern in the NBA. Adam Stern, we got a problem, man. Adam Stern. You, you mix it up the uh, combine of Adam Silver and David Adam, Stern. Oh, that's my, yeah. David Stern, Adam David Stern. Stern. My yeah. friend is Adam Stern. I actually have a friend, shout out sponsorship. He just got engaged recently to a beautiful wide woman. So shout out sponsorship to him. But David Stern, no, Adam Silver. I need you to go and talk to some of these teams, especially in particular the motherfucking Oklahoma City Thunder. This is two seasons back to back now that I've had a fantasy team where you got players on your team that are young developing players. But for some reason, they all end up somehow, you know, just playing really well for a little stretch, making your team competitive. And then all of a sudden, oh, man, they injured. They ain't going to be back for a while. We're going to take it real slow with them because we want to develop them. Nigga, you got like 38 more picks in the first round over the next five years. None of these players are going to be here in a few years because you're not actually developing them. What you're doing is saying, hey, we got these guys. They look like they might be pretty good. But we're not going to let them develop. We're not going to let them play and build chemistry amongst each other. We're not going to build a certain culture because every time they do well enough where they start getting competitive to where we might win too many games and lose dra draft positions potentially, they, they end up with an injury. They hurt. I got a dude on my team who started balling. He just got a third position eligibility too. Josh Giddy. Okay. I am a third position. Small forward. Oh man. Boom. Blessing this guy's man's putting up damn near triple doubles over the last almost month, averaging close to a triple double. He's like, dude, this is why I, I picked up this dude and held on to him all year. Cause end of the year, I'm hoping he's going to ball out. He's going to, they're going to be developing him because, because they're not going to do what they did last year. They ain't going to do that again. That was ridiculous what they did last year. They wouldn't do it again. They wouldn't dare. Oh, they dared. Josh Giddy has one of his best games of the season. Balls out, plays 37 minutes, something like that. They were like, man, he looked great. This is what you can expect from Josh Giddy. Next morning, Josh Giddy has a hip injury, and he's going to be out this the next game. Oh, Josh Giddy's going to miss out this next game, too. You know what? A week later, Josh Giddy's like at least two weeks away. He's and this 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 motherfucking token ass bullshit ass you fucking sellout ass coach Denegal whatever your goddamn name is you are a sellout Nakoon and I hate you man we're gonna be real smart we really want to develop them from the start from the, from the beginning with their health wise and their skill wise we don't want them to play too much because you know what we want to be able to have high draft picks next year too and this guy's at least a couple it's like a week away now maybe he's two weeks away he's nowhere close the motherfucker just finished playing he's 19 years old. He just finished balling out a game, was playing the best basketball season. All of a sudden, this motherfucker got a degenerative hip issue we ain't heard about. Huh? He's 19 years old. I was just talking to somebody about bouncing back, you know what I'm saying? Bouncing back as a as a 19-year-old from a night of drinking or a night of partying or like going on one of those those, those those days, you know, when you when you you fucking around or you doing something, you on a trip, and you don't sleep much over the course of like 36, 48, maybe 72 hours, right? You know, you do something like that and people are like, oh, damn, man, that was that was a crazy stretch, but it was worth it. It was fun. And you bounce back and you you can still you can still manage. Try that doing in your in your, in your mid 30s, early 30s, mid 30s, 40s. You can't do that. There's a 19 year old motherfucker from Australia. Now, I didn't think Australians were soft, but you know, say Adam, Adam, Adam Silver, they, they saying something bad about the Australians. You don't want to fix that. Also, uh, Josh Gideon, all the, uh, anybody else from Australia, they say something bad about you right now because they're saying you soft as a 19 year old and you can't bounce back from whatever this phantom injury that didn't affect you in the night before the game when you was balling. My boy Lou Dort, who gets Dort out there balling, stroking threes. Hey, man. He just dropped 20 some points weak, in the dude. game. He dropped 20 some points in the game, and uh, now his shoulder hurt. So we're going to give him some weeks off. He gonna, 
we're gonna take we're gonna take this basketball off his hands. That's what it is Michael B. Jordan too. They took the basketball out of his hands and he ain't played in like three weeks. Because somehow he was shocked the ball too much and got tendinopathy in his shoulder. I am tired of o- Oklahoma City having a team in that shitty ass podunk ass city. I'm tired of them having a, you know, a, a management ownership that's doing some bullshit ass tanking bullshit and traded for so many goddamn picks that they can't keep all the players they're gonna be drafting over the next few years. And they they, they over here solely in the name of what it means to have a competitive basketball team. Fuck you, OKC. You don't deserve a team no more. Adam Silver, I need you to go in there and say, y'all better start playing your young players. You better stop coming up with these phantom-ass, fake-ass injuries. Otherwise, y'all about to lose your team. Take away the fucking draft picks. Y'all ain't got no more first-round draft picks. Y'all ain't got to worry about trying to tank for the season anymore. Play with the mediocre-ass players that y'all got right now or play with the young talent that y'all claim you guys are just really wanting to foster and nurture into being great. Play with them and figure out how the fuck they're going to get good by having them sit every goddamn time they play well. Bullshit ass motherfucking Oklahoma City. Who the fuck wants to go live in Oklahoma City? Nobody. These motherfuckers ain't gonna resign with us. That's why we need 48 first round picks so we can continue to draft motherfuckers to replace these weak motherfuckers that they're about to leave once they realize they can't play here because they're too good. And they don't want us, they don't want us to win. So why the fuck will I play here anyways? And it's Oklahoma motherfucking city. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, well, I think there's this certain sentiment that if you if you're not the captain, captain, you're okay with the boat sinking. Um, and I say that just because like there's so many issues that people, I mean, that we're just more aware of now, right? And like, and so, and so if you ever read, read like a book called the, like the Bell Curve, right? So no matter what you talk about, there's going to be a certain percentage of people who care a lot about it. <laughs> There's going to be a certain percentage of people who care a little bit about it and just, you know, could sway either way. And there's a bunch of people who just don't care about it at all. Um, so when we talk about war and dis, uh, disenfranchisement or we talk about racism, there's people, there's a lot of people who care about it a lot, right? But they want you to care about the racism that they care about, right? And because you're not talking about the thing they want to talk about, they want to tear down how how tragic this could be, right? Like it could be, it's terrible for, it's terrible for people in Ukraine, right? Yeah. It doesn't mean just because people, more people are talking about it doesn't mean it's less tragic in other places. Um, yeah. And we yeah. need to really work towards that. Like, all right, cool, can we solve that? All right, let's talk about that rather than trying to trying to solve the whole thing at one time, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I liken it to the same thing that we, that we talked about like a long time ago with sort of uh, Kim Kardashian trying to get people out of prison, right? Like, Hey, it's good that she's trying to get people out of prison, but you know what people did? Rather than said, "Oh man, that's good that she's doing that." Hey, how can we get more people to get to you know try to reform this legal system? People are like, "Nah, she shouldn't be doing that because she needs to get this person out of jail, this person out of jail." And what about this person who's doing work? Like, rather than adding on, people are trying to take away from it, and you just try to use it. So I feel like that's where people are right now, man. I feel like if it's not the thing I the exact thing I care about, I'm gonna try to find everything, every reason why. Mm-hmm. why we shouldn't put as a big light on it i'm trying to steal as much of that, of that spotlight as i can rather than just sort of like hey like <laughs> there's something actually going on here something really good happening here why can't we just enjoy that or why can't we sort of you know yeah. amplify that thing because naturally when i think when that happens that's when other things get solved too mm-hmm. um but yeah it's, it's so yeah, it's dumb man as a uh, my my favorite line in uh one of my favorite quotes of all times, the men in black one. We talked about this. I watched this movie last week. We talked about it last week. Uh, he said, A person smart, people are stupid. <laughs> and some my like, favorite uh, quote from that, very, my favorite quote from that movie. Yeah. Right. Like you talk to this already, like, oh, that makes sense. But you get like group people, somehow it just turns to shit. But anyway, turns into church. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Turns into church. Like, I agree. You got everybody falling out under the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> watch Aaron. I watch Aaron praying tongues one time. He ain't praying tongues never before in his life. Come to my church, start praying in tongues. <laughs> That's because your your church heater was broken, and I really was having a stroke. <laughs> I was trying to tell someone shit wasn't working. I'm having a stroke. And the motherfucker That's over so here, easy. motherfucker over here. They sent over that woman wearing all white. That old woman wearing all white. The family 
for about 15 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> oh, Lord. We just got a little bit of the Holy Ghost in him. That's, he'll be all right. I'm over there having a goddamn stroke. Didn't even pick up anything. In my no, head. I'm about to be a ghost. It ain't the Holy Ghost. In exactly. <laughs> I'm about to be a ghost. <laughs> ghost. He just got the Holy Ghost in him. He's going to be all right. My favorite, yeah, because that's my favorite. The Lord is speaking through him. <laughs>